Let's talk about idiopathic intracranial hypertension. So this is a disease that classically presents in an obese woman in her childbearing years. It can present in men as well, less commonly. There are medications that are associated with the disease, though there is no known causal link. So people that are taking growth hormones or tetracycline, such as doxycycline and minocycline, as well as hypervitaminosis A, such as when someone's taking acne treatments, these can all be associated uh, with the disease, and there are other medications as well. The primary cause and pathogenesis of the disease is not known. In terms of symptoms, the most common symptom is headache. This headache is very nonspecific, it may or may not be positional, and it can mimic other headaches such as migraines or tension headaches. Uh, the next most common symptom is transient visual obscurations, and that can happen in around 70% of patients. These can be either unilateral or bilateral losses of vision that usually happen for a few seconds and can be brought about by changes in position. Photopsias can happen as well, and these are brief flashes of light. And you can have pulsatile tinnitus as well. And patients typically will describe this as hearing the sound of rushing water. Diplopia can happen, which can either be from a sixth nerve palsy, being the most common nerve palsy, or other cranial nerve palsy. Some other common symptoms can be back pain and retrobulbar pain and uh, more rare than the transient visual losses is a progressive loss of vision and this is more severe. In terms of evaluation on physical exam, on the fundoscopic exam you can see papilledema and this is going to be more likely bilateral than unilateral. You can see an example here where you have blurring of the optic disc margins and swelling. There can be a loss of visual field, which is usually a peripheral visual field loss, and this is followed by loss of visual acuity if untreated. And uh, you can also see cranial nerve palsies on exam, with the sixth nerve being the most common. Now in terms of diagnostic workup, when you see papilledema, for anyone with papilledema, you'll want to get head imaging. Uh, so this will start with a brain MRI and MR venography as well uh, with contrast. The MRI can help you rule out masses, which can cause intracranial hypertension. And the MRV can help you diagnose a venous sinus thrombosis. Now, if you don't have a mass or venous sinus thrombosis, some findings that you can see on the MRI that can help you pinpoint the diagnosis of IIH is posterior sclera flattening. You can also have distension of the perioptic subarachnoid space. You can have an empty cella and you can have tortuosity or enhancement of the optic nerve. Uh, a lumbar puncture would follow and this is required for the diagnosis and you'll typically see an elevated opening pressure uh, above 250 uh, millimeters water and the CSF labs will be normal. A blood pressure measurement is recommended in all patients because optic neuropathy related to malignant hypertension can mimic papilledema. Um, ophthalmology uh, consult is required as well. So here's an example where you can see flattening of the posterior sclera. This is probably the most common MRI finding. So in terms of the diagnosis, if you have the clinical symptoms, no other uh, neurologic abnormalities or impairment of consciousness, um, if you have elevated intracranial pressures on the lumbar puncture with normal CSF composition, if you have a negative head imaging, an MRI or CT scan if they're not able to do an MRI, and if you can ad identify any other causes of intracranial hypertension, then the diagnosis is made. 
In terms of treatment, you'll want to discontinue the medications that are commonly associated with IIH. The mainstay of treatment as well is weight loss and low sodium diet and exercise. Uh, first line medication treatment, which can be started at the same time as the diagnosis is made, in include uh, acetazolamide or other carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. In second line, you can add on ferrosamide or topiramate. Now, if their vision is getting worse, um, people will go on to do optic nerve sheath fenestration surgery or a, a CSF shunt surgery, such as a ventriculoperitoneal shunt or lumboperitoneal shunt. In terms of prognosis with treatment, the uh, condition gets better over the span of months or years, although they may not return to baseline. This is especially true of those that present with significant vision loss. And the disease can also, when it gets better with weight loss, it can also get worse with weight gain.